We gather here on this Sunday in the light of All Souls Day and uh, All Saints Day. And uh, sometimes we like to mash them together and see them as one particular thing. We remember the loved ones of this faith community who have passed away this year. And we recall their good deeds and what they have taught us. But I like to cast our net wide and make sure we include all those who have been a part of our lives, not just this community, so that we might remember uh, the life lessons that we have learned from all these individuals. Even though um, not all the lessons were positive, um, we can still learn a lot about what it means to be in community and take those life lessons with us all the days of our lives. In fact, um, I think some of those life lessons are a little bit like recipes. Uh, sometimes they're well written down, they're well thought out, they, they explain everything, and sometimes those recipes are a little bit more than a scribble on a napkin, an idea or a thought that um, might help inspire something within you, as you said about cooking. Or maybe it's just a, a comment like, I like uh, rhubarb pie, and then uh, it sets you off to go discover new recipes for pies. Well, my grandmother, Zelma Norrington, who passed away um, five years ago in 2012, um, was a meticulous cook, and she wrote down all her recipes uh, in one of those card boxes that uh, many of us might be familiar with, and you would have to scroll through them. Well, her, her daughter, my aunt, um, decided to put them all into a cookbook for um, the family, Norrington family cookbook recipes. And I turn to this a lot when it comes around to November and I'm starting to make pies for the holiday or, or cook up my favorite um, recipe, which is called curry eggs. So I turn to this page here that has a wonderful picture of my grandmother um, feeding a very young uncle of mine at, uh, at a high chair. And I began reading the ingredients here, um, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, two cups of milk, one tablespoon of curry powder. And I go about making this amazing recipe, um, curry eggs, which we only have um, a couple times throughout the year as a family. And uh, I began cooking it and adding um, parsley and the mushrooms and hard-boiled eggs to it. It's, it's a wonderful delicacy and I look forward to it every year. However, every time I open this recipe, I get tripped up because there's one ingredient in here that always throws me for a loop. And it says, add grated Velveeta cheese, um, which was a, a very favorite ingredient of my grandmothers and those who grew up in the 50s, um, highly processed cheese. But her, her, uh, Measurements about it are very cryptic. So it's grated Velveeta cheese, about one and a half inch um, of, a, of a two by two by two by two piece. And it, it just never made sense about how much of this Velveeta cheese um, I'm supposed to put into the curry. So it never fails that I pull out my phone and I call my mother. And I'm like, Mom, <laughs> mad at it again, I'm making curry eggs. And uh, I can never remember what this piece of the recipe means. And can you just tell me how much cheese I need to put in here? And so we laugh about it, my mother and I. And um, we have a nice conversation about how life is and, and continue to dive back into the cooking maybe a half hour later after a lovely conversation with my mother. And um, uh, no matter what the answer is for that, that mystery piece of of um, how much cheese put into the curry eggs, it always turns out well. And um, it's a part of uh, my family's tradition and part of this holiday. You see, my grandmother was never uh, aloof and she was always meticulous about the recipes that she wrote down. I think my grandmother intentionally left some of the details out of her recipes. Not because she was forgetful, for 
grandmother's elbow was a meticulous woman and a cook. I think she left out some of these details because she wanted us to call to get the details. <laughs> It's a trick for all of us parents out there. We want our children to give us a call on the holidays. You didn't write down this, but what is this piece here? You see, she wanted us to be in relationship with one another. And whether it was me calling my grandmother when I was in college and trying to make this recipe in my dormitory uh, kitchen as a young college student, or when I was in Europe, I was in London and I called my grandmother and said, I don't know what this recipe is. Can you uh, tell me what the cheese ratio is? It was a long distance call. Um, or if it was giving a call to my mother in the absence of my grandmother to talk with her about this recipe. My grandmother's gift was not forgetfulness, but intentional relationality. She wanted us to reach out. She needed us to remember that cooking isn't always about the recipe. She wanted us to understand that as we are in relationship to one another, sometimes it's good to be humble and realize that you don't have all the information present. And like that recipe that was missing the crucial information, I had to humble myself to call my mother when I hadn't called in several weeks or months, or when I was much younger, perhaps even a year, um, giving her a call and asking about the recipe offered a very gentle way of engaging something that sometimes was dreadful, but which has become now more and more lovely and hopeful and joy-filled. The Episcopal priest and theologian Carter Hayward writes that genuine humility is a gift from God which has nothing to do with downcast eyes, a misty voice, and noble stories of sacrifice. Humility is rather living courageously in a spirit of radical connectedness with others, which enables us to see ourselves as God sees us, sisters and brothers, each as deeply valued and worthy of respect as every other. And I think about that in light of today's scripture, and I believe that that is what Jesus demonstrates. I think that is what Jesus calls us to live into, is a sense of radical connectedness. For that's what today's passage is about. Oftentimes, this passage is really emphasized on the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and the religious leaders who say to do one thing and yet turn around and do something completely different. Jesus calls them out in this hypocrisy saying that they love the titles and they love to walk around town in the finest clothes and say that they are the greatest and yet Jesus says that the least of us will be the greatest. The one who is a servant to all will become the greatest of all. The last we become the first. What Jesus is talking about is shifting our focus from hypocrisy to about the interconnectedness, about relationship. The Hebrew word shenapa is rendered as hypocrite, though it usually means godless or profane. As a word that Jesus probably would have used. This should guide us in Jesus' criticism of the leaders of his people. Rather than seeing it as Jesus calling out the hypocriticalness of people, Jesus is calling out the godlessness of people, which in my opinion is more of a slap in the face of the Pharisees and those religious leaders of his day. You see, Jesus is constantly turning us to godliness, and faithfulness. He's turning us to see that the last is the greatest. And the greatest is typically the last. Jesus believes over and over that we are to be servants to one another, to provide um, an act of kindness and generosity, 
Um, as I watched our children carry that big pot around the sanctuary, I didn't really know how things were going to turn out, but I saw in that the ability for all of them to hold on to that pot together, no matter where it was going to lead them. I think that's a great metaphor for us in our lives, that no matter where uh, we are led in our lives, if we all hang on tightly to something that we know is good and trustworthy, we'll get there together, at the very least. I believe that God is inside each and every single one of us. Indeed, this is what we heard last week when Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says that I am in you and you are in me and God is in me. This kind of circular rationality, he is saying that God is in every single one of us. And so when Jesus says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and Jesus says that God is in us, Jesus is saying that the best way to love God is to love one another, is to love ourselves. That powerful statement, to love your neighbor as yourself, is to love God in your neighbor as you love God in yourself. This is the godliness that Jesus was trying to point out to those Pharisees. He said that those who are uh, caring for one another, being kind to one another, paying attention to those who are naked, hungry, starving, who are alone in this world, if we pay attention to those and care for them, then we will be demonstrating godliness and faithfulness. So our own godliness, then, is dependent upon the way in which we serve one another, and the ways in which we love one another. Service, then, is faithfulness. How my grandmother, Zelma, served myself and my, my family, even though that she has been gone for several years now, was to get us to relate to one another. It was a gift that went beyond her life and sticks with us today. She wanted us not to cook, not just to cook, but to love, to enjoy the moments, to call, to speak, to share the food, to lift up what is good about this life, to relate even when times of relating are very hard, to start off with something very simple like food. You see, food has the magic to bring us all together. Like we will this morning gather around the table of God and Christ and the Holy Spirit to share a meal that transcends just this moment. It transcends just feeding our hungry bellies. It feeds our spirits. My grandmother wanted us to serve up something good in the midst of all of it. You see, sometimes the recipe is not about the food. And so I hope as you go about this season pulling out recipes or even writing down some of your own to pass along to your loved ones, whatever it is that you want them to cook up or serve up, that you don't include all the details. Keep something secret to yourself. And as any good chef will tell you, that way you'll help your loved ones discover a little faith in the midst of the holidays, in the midst of cooking and sharing. They will reach out and discover the joy and the faithfulness and the godliness of being connected to you and to each other. May you all have a recipe that is good for your soul, that connects and binds you to the love of God and to your neighbor. Amen. Amen.